There are no setbacks. In a previous issue, I wrote about the observation that evolution is hardwired into the human DNA. Additionally, as spiritual, non-corporeal entities, we have waded into this swampy matrix in order to learn about our powers, test ourselves, and experience this planetary density in all its technicolor, ultra-high-definition glory. After birthing ourselves into a body, we then go about the intimate process of acculturation and are instructed in the rules for the, quote, pursuit of happiness, unquote only to discover, at some point for most of us, the undoing of that socialization seems to be the only way to pursue that elusive happiness. At some point, we look back on our journey and inevitably wonder what it's really all been about. We question the value and validity of our experiences and long for a place, or at least a headset, where there is ease, joy, and the glory of being. It's almost as if that place is just not possible upon this seemingly diametrically opposed world. These concepts of the pursuit of happiness and that joyful place are precisely what are hardwired into the DNA. And the resistances built into the cultural matrix are the barriers we have agreed to make our own in order to overcome them in order to reach our personal utopia. What we come to realize is that every problem, every difficulty, all the suffering and pain is priming us for the pilgrimage to that glorious kingdom. Traps are everywhere and mercilessly convincing, adding more difficulty to the process. Religions capitalize on this DNA-born urge to make it to that higher life, imposing fake laws and transgressions so that we can only expect to arrive at the kingdom after dropping the body. Pretty effective population control trap. Everything we experience that gets in the way of our pursuit of happiness is interpreted as a setback, a discouragement, that seems to move the horizon of our desires fulfilled further and further away. The truth of the matter is that all of our experiences are teaching us how to find our personal road to utopian fulfillment. Of course, most of us give up at some point, settling for a faint version of the glorious vision that has been driving us forward. So we check out, waiting to die and maybe for the chance to try it again in some other life. Instead, there is the non-duality quantum path. This is where we hold our vision of utopian fulfillment no matter what and observe that all our experience is a reflection of what we have bought into that has prevented the having of it. By assuming the position of non-attachment towards these seeming barriers, we learn not only about our own points of view and attachments to negative feelings and situations, but we find that by allowing these negative experiences to float by and through us, we effectively neutralize the negativity and reveal the new positive energies the negativity was obscuring. Adversity then becomes advantage. Setbacks become opportunities to explore our own resistances, reclaim our power in the area, and fill the new found space with joy, ease, and vision. This is a completely personal journey. Others' adversities have nothing to do with where we're going. Others' suffering and wailing is really none of our business, unless we discover a karmic or energetic bond. But the discovery of that bond begins to neutralize it, and beyond that bondage lies more energy from a vision lost. So, to quote a vernacular truism, It's all good, man. This is literally true, because... The foundations of the very structure of the universe is love. Love is the magic carpet allowing us to ride the currents and waves of our own resistances to that glorious vision of fulfillment and joy that is ultimately inevitable. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx www.pureenergyrx.com